Welcome to the Drum Computer Tutorial Series. My name's Tom Cosm. This video is on the pattern mute and mapping area. If you're not looking at that area, you need to click this rainbow button with the down arrow over here. When it's enabled, we can see the view. When it's disabled, we see the mixer. So click on this to bring it up. What exactly is the pattern mute and mapping zone area? Well, as the name implies, it allows you to select different patterns. It allows you to mute particular drum hits, and it allows you to map interesting things like pitch changes and rolls to keys on your keyboard. Let's start off with the patterns first. So over here we have 1 through 16, and these are assigned to notes by the way, C negative 2 up to what's this, a E sharp, a D sharp negative 1. So if we click on pattern number 1, we get pattern number 1, and we see pattern number 1 up here in the pattern indicator. But if we go to number 2, we switch to pattern number 2. Now there's not much change between these two patterns, so I'm just going to go ahead and make some. So pattern 2 is a lot busier, I'm going to switch back to pattern 1. I'm just using my mouse for now as I don't have a MIDI keyboard on me, but if you have a keyboard, you can use these notes to quickly switch between the patterns. And notice that the, the playhead in the sequencer doesn't skip, it doesn't start each time you do it, it continues playing in time to the beat, so you can switch between them quite rapidly. If you had 16 patterns, you can do all kinds of awesome stuff. Let's say I don't want to have to click each time I want to change between the patterns. What I'm going to do is use the chain sequence area. It's up here. You'll see that we have 16 individual chain sequence units. They're all 1, 1, 1, 1 at the moment. I'm going to change the second one to number 2. I'm going to move the loop marker. This has its own loop marker. I'm going to move that back so it just loops 1 and 2. And I'm going to hit chain. And you'll hear it now goes pattern 1 and pattern 2. If we look up the top in the indicator, pattern 1 and pattern 2. But it's not changing the sequencer for us. If we want to do that, we have to click on this I button here, and you'll see it'll update as it moves through the patterns. Okay, that's all good, but I want more than two patterns. I'm just going to turn off the I here. I want more than two patterns, but pattern 3 is completely blank. I'm going to turn off the chain. We can't hear anything. There's nothing there. I don't want to go and write a whole new pattern here, so I'm going to go back to pattern 1. I'm going to click on the copy and paste button, and all the other patterns start flashing, saying, where do you want to copy number 1 to? I'm going to go, I want to copy number 1 to number 3. I simply click on it, and now number 3, as you can see up in the pattern indicator, is showing in the sequencer. It's the same as pattern 1. So now I can do some interesting stuff. I can change this all around. Let's get rid of all the hats. Very good, so pattern 3, pattern 1, pattern 2. Let's copy pattern 1 again to pattern number 4. This time, I'm going to use the global random function. Get something totally crazy. That sounds good to me. Now I can drag this out, this chain, and I can make it go 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's turn the chain on and let's enable the viewing of it. Pattern 2, 3, and 4. And of course we can make this as long as we like, we can mix between 1 and 4, we can have up to 16 patterns moving across in the chain. Really good way of getting a very long sequence of patterns going. You could almost write a whole track here. Let's drag that right out. And let's turn the chain off for now. I'm going to go back to pattern 1. I want to show you the mute area. The way the mute area works is you can mute any one of the individual drum hits by pushing the key, or you can mute multiple hits if you have a keyboard, which I do not. But I can do it with the mouse, so let's say I want to get rid of the kick drum. I'm just going to hold down this note here, which is E negative 1 on your keyboard. And you can hear the kick is gone. Let's mute the snare. Let's bring up number 3. Or number four. So again, if you have a keyboard, you can do multiple ones of these. So with the patterns assigned to keys and the mutes assigned to keys, you can actually jam, you could load this up as an instrument, you could play with other people, and you can use your keyboard as a way to bring stuff in, bring stuff out, change patterns, and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about the mapping zones. The mapping zones allow you to specify particular places in a keyboard which do things to the sound based on their settings in the synthesizer sound design pages. So for an example, let's look at this kick here. We have a 1 here and it's on this key here. Um, the other thing to note is this colourful thing down the bottom. If we want to drag up, if we want to go further to the right on our keyboard, we can click here and we can drag and you'll see that we can move this across all the way to the right. So let's say number 1 here, if I open up my synth here, I'm going to choose pitch. I'm just going to choose pitch for now. So I've enabled the pitch mapping enable button or the pitch mapping button here and I'm going to go to my map page and I'm going to click on an area in between 1 and 2. You'll hear that it now plays a kick drum but it's pitching it up as we go up. Let me just go into our sequence and we'll get rid of the kick drums here so we can play them ourselves. 
I might actually even stop the sequence. And you can hear how it pitches up as we go in between that range. We can drag two across and three across and four across and five across and we can get more pitch here. But this number one also goes into the negatives. You notice the other ones don't. Number one does. So that means we can actually go down quite low. Almost so low that we can't hear it. So again, let's go. Let's try the snare. The snare is currently uh, doesn't have either of them enabled, but let's enable pitch and we'll enable roll as well. Let's get the pattern going. And we'll go back to number two here and let's click on the note next to number two. Now we have a roll and it's pitched it up. Let's try this one. So now we've got eighth notes. Let's say we want a bit more resolution. We can drag this across. Uh, let me just choose a different mapping. So we can actually save these mappings and load them. Let's try octaves. So now we have a massive amount of keys in between each note and that means we can really get that pitch and roll uh, feature going. So let's try it again. Very good, let's try the hats as well. Uh, we need to enable it. Remember, in the synth page, you need to have them enabled in order to get it happening. And let's get a kick back in. And once you've saved your mappings, again, this is really dependent on having a keyboard in front of you and how you want to actually play things. When you have that mapping sorted, you go over to the preset menu and you can save it as something unique. And then you can load it for other kits that you make. One more thing I want to show you with the actual zones is we can use them as a modulation source. So I'm going over to my snare here and I'm going to choose zone as one of my sources in the modulation matrix. And I'm going to send that to the destination of decay one, which is the resonator decay. I'm going to bring this parameter up. And now as I use these keys in between two and three, you'll see that the decay on the actual resonator will go up. So that is the pattern mapping mute area. My name's Tom Cosm. Stay tuned for the next video.